for a letter. UT editorial wrote about his vulnerable teachers. There are 8,000 teachers in the San Diego Unified School District, which we'll talk about here today. One was fired in a four-year period. One was fired. That's an amazing group of people you're working for. They're almost perfect. And it it's stunning. And I think you need to understand that. So that's what's in front of you today, to our panelists. Sean, starting to my left, but by no means is that uh, intentional or negative. John Morlock, joined the Orange County Board of Supervisors and the Orange County Transportation Authority Board of Directors in December of 2006. On March 17, 1995, John was appointed to fill the vacancy of Orange County Treasurer Tax Collector, where he served for nearly 12 years. Morlock has the distinction, I didn't write this, Morlock has the distinction of having predicted the largest municipal bond portfolio loss of bankruptcy in U.S. history, for those of you that remember in the early 90s what happened in Orange County. Prior to serving as Orange County Treasurer as Orange County Treasurer Tax Collector, Morlock was Vice President of Balzer Horowitz, Frank, and Wakeling, an accounting corporation, and was the administrative partner in the Costa Mesa office. John's a graduate of Cal State University at Long Beach, and the University of Delaware. Uh, he's a terrific family guy. He's a wonderful person. I've known John for years. He was instrumental in helping us in some things we'll talk about until later. And there's no uh, better friend I'd rather have in a fight when he goes to uh, Europe against public employee unions. Uh, both size-wise as well as intellect-wise, John's the guy you want on your side. So John Morlock. <laughs> Next to John, City Council Member Carl DeMao from the City of San Diego. On June 3rd, 2008, Carl was elected to the San Diego City Council to represent District 5. Carl made history as a non-incumbent, taking a council seat by the widest margin in a primary, winning 66% of the vote. DeMao's pledge to the voters was simple, clean up City Hall. <clears throat> clean up City Hall, I'm sorry. His platform includes balancing the budget, reforming the pension system, fixing crumbling infrastructure, and restoring ethics and accountability to every level of, level of city government. Carl has run two multi-million dollar companies, which uh, before he ran, he sold to the Toms Thompson Publishing Group in late 2007, so he could focus solely on his efforts to turn San Diego and the city around. And I can tell you, as somebody who works with Carl on a daily basis, He's solely dedicated to doing that. He's somebody that's come from the private sector, given up a lucrative career so that he can help turn around a city that's, for all intents and purposes, as Ron said, bankrupt. And I think that really says something about the kind of people we need in government. So Carl, Councilman Carl DeMaio. <laughs> Stephen Greenhut is director now to my right though perhaps not far enough. Stephen Green is director of the Pacific Research Institute's Journalism Center in Sacramento, which launched CalWatchDog.com in 2010 to provide in-depth news coverage of California government with a focus on covering waste, fraud, and misuse of taxpayer dollars. Yes, that is going on, believe it or not. <clears throat> Previously, Greenhut was deputy editor and columnist in Orange County Register. And he is author of the 2004 book, Abuse of Power, How the Government Misuses Eminent Domain, and the 2009 book, Plunder, How Public Employee Unions Are Raiding Treasuries, Controlling Our Lives, and Bankrupting the Nation. Clear enough to everybody what this book is about. <laughs> I just recently finished it. All of you need to read it as well. Don't read it before you go to bed, because you go to bed angry every night, and it's <laughs> about 2.30 in the afternoon when you're feeling like taking a nap. His columns have been published in newspapers across the country, including the Wall Street Journal and the online New York Times. In 2005, Greenhut won the Institute for Justice's Thomas Paine Award for his right to promoting freedom. He graduated from George Washington University, is married, and has three daughters. Steve Greenhut. Another good friend, uh, somebody I've known in the fight for probably longer, actually longer than everybody else, Kevin Dayton. Kevin Dayton is the Government Affairs Director for Associated Builders and Contractors of California, often referred to by their acronym ABC, which represents Merit Shop, that's another way of saying union free, contractors performing major commercial, industrial, and public works construction projects throughout the state. The odds are, if you see a major for any construction project going on in the state, it's being built by ABC or non union members. That's the reality of today's construction workforce. Don't let the unions fool you. He coordinates ABC state and local political operations, including issue analysis and the development and implementation of strategies to, to protect fair and open bid competition and freedom of choice in apprenticeship training. 
He's an adjunct fellow at the Pacific Research Institute. Before working for ABC, he spent two and a half years as a legislative assistant for U.S. Representative Gary Franks, um, Republican of Connecticut, and he is a graduate of Yale University. Kevin? So enough with me, I'm going to turn it over to our esteemed panel. There are people up here, uh, not all are Republicans, but like I said, they're all freedom lovers, and that's what we're here to discuss today. So be prepared, the fire hose is now about to be turned on. We're going to turn on for 10 minutes each some opening presentations. They're going to frame the issue for you. We'll have an interactive discussion with the audience, and then we'll leave with our panelists proposing solutions uh, to the problems that they uh, construct here today. So, Mr. Mormon. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, the problem is we have way too much to talk about, so I know. you're, you're going to give me like a five minute, four minute, yes, sir. 30 minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Eric said, I'm a certified public accountant and uh, was a managing partner of uh, our Mesa office. And in 1994, I uh, decided to run against our city treasurer of more than 20 years, uh, Robert Citron, uh, because of the way he was investing his money. And uh, the rest is sort of history. We tried to tell the county that uh, what he was doing would potentially uh, put us in financial jeopardy, and that happened. We filed for chapter nine bankruptcy uh, in uh, December of 1994, and three months later, I was appointed treasurer uh, to replace him after he resigned. There, uh, there are more than just that type of doing office going on uh, in government. Uh, five years later, I was busy screaming about a, a phony sale of the 91 express lanes to a just recently formed a nonprofit, and the buyer was being represented by the same attorney that the seller was being uh, uh, represented by every, and they were even the attorneys for the state infrastructure bank. So things like this come up all the time. We've just got to be so diligent all the nonsense that goes on. But what was amazing to me is I sat on the retirement board in 1999, uh, a bill that was uh, sponsored by Senator Ortiz uh, and Assemblyman Lou Correa out of Orange County, uh, Senate Bill 400, uh, which allowed for pensions to go from 2% at 50 for public safety officials to 3% at 50. That was a 50% increase. That bill passed 70 votes yes in the assembly. Think about that. 70 votes yes in the assembly. Seven no's. You can guess who one of the no votes was. <laughs> Tom McClintock. And, and three that just weren't there at the time of the vote. In the Senate, the vote was 36 to 0, I guess. Four, four individuals happened to be out of the room at the time. Which means, as Eric said earlier, Republicans, we have our we have blood all over this. Our hands are blood. We, we, we voted for this. Now, I'm trying to figure out why. I've had a chance to talk to some, but obviously they were said, they were told, well, this gives counties and cities local control. You know, if you want to do 3% of 50, that's your business. But we'll give you the option. <clears throat> well, it started with the CHPs. And then what's really great about people is they are children in adult bodies. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing they say is, that's not fair. What about me? How come, I, how come they get it and I don't get it? And boom, that slippery slope went in. Everyone had to have 3% of 50 or they were going to have a problem recruiting. Like it had a recruitment component. So you saw, the, you saw the, the, the ball just roll. They said things like, um, well, we're taking union money. How do we vote no? Republicans were taking union money. I mean, I went to the dinner last night. We got a pretty substantial union as one of the sponsors of the dinner. For the Mick Whitman dinner. I mean, it's like, what a, you know, what a mind blower. Um, I think a lot of them said, you know, we're, we're, if, even if you vote no, it's going to pass. So why, why upset the unions anyway? Why don't we just vote yes? I mean, I can think of all the, all the reasons that, you know, maybe that they were insecure of why take on the unions. Maybe they, they just weren't told the truth. This is a great panel. Cal Perth said, if you vote for this, you'll save money. <laughs> What you don't probably know is not one actuary at CalPERS is external. They're all internal. They're all union members. <laughs> I mean, this is like, you can't write this as if you were doing fiction, right? This is, a, so anyway. Right? So, so I want to talk about accountability, solutions in the future, 
And the accountability is 